Hey folks, Nick here from another BookTube channel, and today, taking a look at a really cool artifact. This is Fear Book, uh, number one of one. It's marketed at, as Beset and Veach's Fear Book, because at the time, the writer of these stories was a nobody, but we know him today as R.L. Stein. Every story in here is credited to Bob Stein, uh, and he would go on to... Uh, Bob and Jane Stein, I should say, uh, and he would go on to become the you know best-selling uh, author of the children series Goosebumps and Fear Street. Uh, personally, a writer that I grew up on, Goosebumps was my jam as a kid, and he got his start in comics. Um, so, what is Fear Book? What is this? This is a a collection that of uh, of reprints from a Scholastic magazine called Weird Worlds. Uh, so it was 1978 when that started uh, being published. It only ran for about eight issues over the course of a few years. Um, and the art duties for this uh, series were outsourced to the Joe Kubert School. Joe Kubert School was open for about two years at the time. Uh, and Joe Kubert would give paid jobs like these to some of his you know, better students uh, and in this case, he reached out to Stephen Bissett, uh, and uh, mo mostly Stephen Bissett, Rick Veach also, as mentioned here, makes an appearance, uh, to kind of take control of this project. Uh, for the first few issues, he handed them off to, to Steve um, to, to uh, you know, do the work, you know, pass it by him, get it approved, send it along. But after the first few issues, uh, he just gave Steve Bissett you know, free reign. Like this is your baby now. So this is a kind of one of Stephen Bissett's first big projects that he worked on. And it is a, it is a horror comic, a horror series, but it is aimed for a younger audience. And Stephen Bissett has a, uh, he writes in the back, um, a, uh, a little outro explaining that at the time, horror was metamorphizing metamorphosing into um the extreme like kid-friendly horror in the 70s pretty much went away uh and he longed for the days of like that the, the horror primer stuff that little kids can get into that wasn't too grisly too gory too scary um, but gave them just enough to hook them on the genre so this was an opportunity to kind of bring back that family-friendly horror. Uh, and of course, it makes sense that R.L. Stein was the guy to write these stories, considering what he would go on to be. And again, this was uh, these, this magazine was published by Scholastic. So Scholastic, that they are a kid's book imprint. Um, so there's a bunch of stories in here. They're all, I think the, they're all about three to four pages long, super short. And we'll just flip through uh, and take a look at it. Most of them are by Stephen Bissett on the artwork. Uh, the first one is Return of the Swamp Beast. This is, again, uh, about seven years before Stephen Bissett joins up with, uh, with Swamp Thing and, and, and joins with Alan Moore for Swamp Thing. Uh, and it, it starts with a kid running through the swamp and being scared by the titular Swamp Beast. Immediately, we're getting... Stephen Bissett's uh, trademark um, lighting, uh, close-up of faces, like fear in the eyes. <laughs> like this is kid-friendly horror, but he's already realizing his style. Like the, you'll see a lot of stuff in here that you you would expect to kind of see in Swamp Thing. Um, the kids' parents grab the sheriff. They say there's the Swamp Beast come back after 50 years we got to go in there and track this thing down when they go in they get attacked as well uh only for the re the revelation to come out that the swamp beast is nothing but a guy in, a, in a, a mask and a suit who's scaring people off so that uh he and his business partner can buy the land cheap and um uh, dig for oil basically but in the final panel we get the ec comics uh ironic ending where the real swamp beast rises up behind them ready to strike and look at the design of this swamp beast this just looks exactly like the monkey king 
from Swamp Thing uh, 27, I believe. Um, like the, that, that mouth, those eyes, exactly like the Monkey King, just make them white instead of green. Uh, and playing with the different panels, even though it's a, it's a kid's magazine or for younger audiences, not keeping things perfectly squared. We have a little iris panel here, We're playing with panel um, width uh, over here, shattered panels, you know, creating that effect. This is stuff we'll see in Swamp Thing, you know, very, very soon. Um, and that's the end of that story. Again, they're super quick. Next one, horror with reservations, same creative team. This couple uh, goes to a spooky hotel or motel called the Dun Inn. Very, very fun, uh, you know, pun for kids um, that, again, R.L. Stein kind of is known for. Great spooky house, though. Love, like, these weird, like, skull, like, head, uh, like, um, like, statues above the doorway. And the hotel is very creepy, but the couple's into it. They, uh, they were looking for a concept, a horror concept hotel to stay in. So they're actually into it at first. They got bats flying through. There's a corpse in the closet. Um, some, there's spiders everywhere. Uh, but then, uh Oh, the corpse turns out to be real and they get ambushed by this guy, uh, behind them, hiding behind the curtains. And it's this weird, like sort of werewolf rat creature guy. And again, we're playing with those panels, another iris. And the resolution is that the ghoulish and uh, monstrous staff keeps them in the uh, the basement dungeon uh, for an extended stay at the hotel. Uh, again, great monster design. Stephen Bissett really going all in on this, not treating it completely like as a, you know, he saw, this was an opportunity for him to break in like he, he's just out of the Kubert school um, or he's still in the Kubert school at this time. He's trying to make an infant for himself and he relished the opportunity to draw monsters rather than uh, superhero stuff. Because when Joe Kubert would give the assignments to his students, it would mostly be like ads f- that feature superheroes, like drawing another bat uh, mobile or, some kind of Spider-Man like toy or something. And Stephen Bissett hated that stuff. He didn't want to draw superheroes. He wanted to draw horror. So when he got this assignment from Joe Kubert, he really leaned into it and had fun with it, which is great. And it, and it comes off the page here. Um, oh, you know what else is really fun? I didn't even mention it. That previous story was colored by Michelle Wrightson, uh, who is, I, I imagine, Bernie Wrightson's wife. I, I'm pretty sure of that. I'll double check, check myself when I edit this. Um, but yeah, I mean, with a last name like Wrightson, what do you expect? Um, Dead Ringer is the next story. In this one, a bunch of teens see uh, a, a new corpse has shown up at the funeral home. Of course, because, you know, you and your friends when you're teenagers, you hang out at the funeral home, you scan the new corpses that are in the, the caskets there. And they notice that the this girl looks exactly like a girl from town and and they decide they're going to prank the old uh the old watchman the old um caretaker of the uh funeral home by swapping uh the body so they they pitch it to Anne. she kind of she agrees although she's she plays coy at first so they go through with the plan she rises from the casket grabs his shoulder um terrifies him and they're all laughing and then Anne shows up. Oh, oh, they didn't make the switch yet. She was late. The corpse really came back to life. Spooky, <laughs> spooky stuff. This is just a pinup here. Um, grandpappy of the night crawlers. Uh, so kids, kids out trying to catch some worms, catch the biggest worm of all precursor to tremors. <laughs> Business as usual is the next one. This is a vampire story. More, some more great architecture from Stephen Bissett, giving these kids a lot to, a lot of, lot to digest and play with when they pick up these magazines. This is a really fun, just like the, the, the layout of this page, like having the skeleton band is also a nice little touch. Uh, it is a, a vampire story. Like I said, so this obvious vampire guy lures this woman out to the balcony. 
uh, where he hypnotizes her, goes in for the kill. Um, again, uh, adorning the page in the corners with these gothic, um, like little statues or, or grotesques that would be on the castle. Um, vampire bites into her, and then there's a big explosion, and he has a stake through his heart suddenly, and he disintegrates into nothing. Love the disintegration sequence, the transformation from bat face back to human face that's like melting into the corpse, into dust. Uh, and you have his, his final skull down there with the vampire teeth and the tongue sticking out real goofily. Uh, the reveal is that the beautiful woman was indeed an android, uh, a vampire hunting android that these guys created um, that is working like a charm. Uh, and that's uh, it, he, this is not the first vampire they've killed with her, but also really fun. I, I love this, uh, the framing of the disintegration as well. This whole little sequence I think is great. And here we have Rick Veach's contribution, A Day to Remember. And this is very different stylistically than what we've been seeing with Bissette. Bissette's lines, very uh, scratchy, almost kind of unhinged all over the page. Rick Veach, um, with his airbrush, very like pitch perfect. You know, like nothing's out of place, no wild lines. Uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a stark contrast. This one is an astronaut floating in space, loses his grip on his lifeline. Uh, and as he's floating away, he sees another version of himself also floating away. And then he keeps seeing different iterations of himself. You could see there's now four of him here floating away from his lifeline. And they're all saying the same thing, doing the same actions. And finally, the, the one nearest to the end grabs the one in front of him, starts to like monkey, uh, monkey bar his way back to the safety of the ship, just project, projecting himself along all of his copies, reaches the lifeline again, and wouldn't you know it, loses his grip again, and it starts over. And so he's doomed for eternity to just repeat this, this uh, process in space. Another one colored by Michelle Wrightson, Egyptian graffiti. We're back to Stephen Bissett on the artwork. Museum. Um, there's hieroglyphics on the wall, and there's people in the hieroglyphics with modern clothing. Oh, that's one of the big mysteries of, uh, of the tomb. How did they know what people would dress like 4,000 years in the future? Uh, this couple get left behind. They get locked in to the, uh, the, the area where the mummy is. Awesome mummy design. Love it. So many different creatures for Stephen Bissett to play with. Um, it ends with the mummy capturing them, and they get added to the the glyphs on the wall. That's the that's where that's that's how they all had modern clothing. The mummy's been capturing people all these years. You would think there'd be negative reviews of the museum <laughs> somewhere that oh, you know, pretty good, but half the tour group disappeared, and we don't know what happened to them. An ad for adolescent radioactive black belt hamsters. <laughs> uh, and I think this is the last uh, story here. A horrible spot. This one is a werewolf story. We had a vampire, we had a mummy. Let's get a werewolf in here. Um, oh, you know what? There's there's one more story after this one as well. Uh, actors walk off a film set. They're filming a werewolf movie. The actor that plays the werewolf is the uh, the husband. Uh, he and his wife drive away from set. This looks really. This looks a little bit um, kind of kind of choppier. Uh, I don't know that this doesn't look, this looks a little bit goofier uh, than the rest of the stories. Like this panel here looks a little bit more kid ish, but then it quickly goes into horror, <laughs> adult horror territory with this old hag. Um, they pull over for the night because it's, it's storming rain. Uh, they stop over at this old crone's house. She gives them a place to sleep. And of course, a werewolf attacks. Uh, and that's full brutal, you know, werewolf uh damage scary this is a this is a werewolf to uh rival anything that bernie wrightson did uh for cycle of the werewolf or any of his many werewolf drawings and it turns out that it's not the old woman that's the werewolf it is the husband and he has turned his wife into a werewolf as well and now they live together free as wolves beautiful beautiful love story and then we have another swamp story pretty appropriate uh, for for uh, Steve Bissett, 
Um, in this case, it's again related to oil under the swamp. Uh, these developers have come in and uh, they're they're tearing up stuff with their bulldozers, and uh, they get their comeuppance when at the end it's re- it's realized that the swamp itself is just uh, the back of an enormous swamp monster. That's an uh, that's an idea that is uh, revisited in Swamp Thing, where Swamp Thing uh, basically becomes an entire mountainside and like lifts up. Um, so again, seeing stuff that gets uh, polished for, for DC comics later. Uh, and that is fear book. Um, we get a, a glimpse here of this is how the script was written by the Steins, uh, Bob and Jane. Uh, this is what Steve Bissett would get uh, to, to work from. He would get like these stick figures with vague, <laughs> um, uh, just uh, idea of what the layout would be um, and the script, and then he would turn this into something like this, which is just uh, fantastic. I mean, great creativity. Um, I wish that there was a hundred more things, a hundred more comics out there exactly like this. Um, and I- I'm sure maybe there are some. I know that there is a uh, a series called Bedlam that reprints a lot of Bissett and Veach's early work. Maybe I'll cover those one day uh, as well. But this is so much fun. This is a great comic book. Highly recommended if you are a fan of uh, horror. If you like, you know, R.L. Stein. If you're a fan of Stephen Bissett, this is such a cool piece to have. Let me know if there's anything cool that I missed in this. Let me know if there's anything else similar to this I should check out. Thank you very much for spending some time with me today. But now it's time to get back to reading.